this day I had this weird experience or moment where God just asked me this question like who is the godliest woman that you can think of and of course I thought of this um, girl called Ashley but I texted Ashley and said hey I'm gonna be in town and I was wondering if you'd be interested in grabbing coffee with me and she turned me down in the spot on story short my sister had a crush on Johnny first hey if you're not interested in you don't see yourself marrying a pastor then uh, you text me saying if we could talk and then um, you said, hey, I'm not really interested in a relationship with you. We were calling and I was like breaking up with him. He goes, is there a chance that this could ever happen? And I said, no. Didn't know what it could be like, like in the future. <laughs> here with coffee and Bible time and I'm here today with Johnny hey <laughs> okay so um, if you guys didn't know me and Johnny are engaged we actually have an engagement video on our channel I'll have it linked in the description if you want to go see it we did a few other videos together too so I'll have those linked in the description I started a Johnny playlist I got distracted you have a little booger oh but... no yeah let's see yeah, I think it's good. Okay, well... It's still there. Or maybe a pimple. Okay, <laughs> we're gonna keep that in. <laughs> no, take it out. <laughs> take it out. No! Okay. okay, anyways, so we have a playlist called Johnny now. Did you know that? No. Yeah, so people can just click on you <laughs> and walk through it. So much pressure. Okay, so today we're gonna um, tell you guys about our story and how God was in all the details of it and we just want him to be glorified by this story of how he brought us together. Um, so yeah. Do you, you want, want to me start? start? Yeah. Okay. All right, so once upon a time, which is 2018, or 2019, um, as you may know, I went to Moody Bible Institute in Chicago. Uh, so I was in a class and uh, Dr. Grill, if you're watching, shout out to you. You asked us to uh, do an assignment or, I don't know why I'm, I'm talking to him. He's he probably <laughs> never gonna see this. Well, he asked us to do an assignment uh, and you have to give a devotional in a, about a psalm um, every class in the morning before we started the, the day. And so my assignment was to do a quick devotional on Psalm 63. So because I am a really good Christian, I went to YouTube to copy <laughs> other ideas. So I go to YouTube and I click Psalm 63 and guess what and guess what was the first video suggestion right there. This girl with crazy curly hair boom like a lion right there um, on a video <laughs> talking about Psalm 60 Psalm 63. And so she had a lot of views and I thought this could be good material and and <laughs> and so I came to find out that you where I'm moody. Uh, I didn't know that Ashley was gonna end up in the same church that I end up in a moody church and so I was the music director for um, for the college ministry there called Crossroads and so I'm serving there and then I see this girl um, crazy hair, lion hair uh, <laughs> come because come, he's like <laughs> you know and so I oh see her God. walking uh, right there in the room at Crossroads which is a college ministry uh, where I was serving and so we start talking and I told her about, hey, how I, I saw you on YouTube and you have a lot of subscribers and you have a lot of views and, and kind of low key, I was like, this is awesome. Like I know a YouTube celebrity or something like that. Oh. Um, and, and yeah, so that's how we, how we started getting to know each other. Well, you say that we didn't start okay, a well, friendship. We have our different sides of the story. I say that we were friends back then, but according to you, we were just acquaintances. Um, okay, pause. Can I go now? Okay. <laughs> well, I was just gonna say, like, I remember, I remember you from Moody, cause like Johnny was really like popular at Moody. Yes. No. You knew everyone, and everyone knew you. Then I remember you came up to me and you said the Psalm 63 thing, and there's not much more I remember than that. But there wasn't. Like, like I was never interested. We never talked. She was never interested. Like. We never talked, and we weren't like actually friends. 
And to be honest, like, I, and not just because you are here, but like, I really, and I've told you this, but I really admire her because, like, after that, I might have subscribed on YouTube, maybe not, who knows. Um, and so I started watching her content and the Super Christ Center videos that she posted. And uh, and I know that her target is mostly women, but I thought, man, I'm a guy, and these are like so refreshing, and I can actually study God's word um, better because of uh, because of her. Uh, she actually paid me to say this, guys. It's not true. Um, <laughs> no, this is actually true, and and I really admire her. Not not like, and I really genuinely wanted to build a friendship with her. In fact, she and I've told you this before. There was a point um, that I'm like, man, I, I, maybe I'm gonna invite. Uh, actually out for coffee, but um, I didn't I didn't end up doing it because I was a coward, but no, um, okay wait also I think that like so we were acquaintances <laughs> you showing the ring. We were acquaintances and then and I felt like leading up to the pandemic Because the pandemic happened and then you graduated from college mm -hmm. but like Leading up to that point. I felt like we were slowly getting to know each other a little bit more because like you would stop me outside and be like, hey, like, how's your prayer journal? How's coffee and Jesus time? Like, you'd never say it right. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I was trying to get you on the YouTube channel. Yeah. And, like, we were, like, starting. And then I gave him the sweatshirt. I gave you the coffee and Bible time sweatshirt. And he sang in front of, like, you know, I said, I'm sad. <laughs> we need a new mic. So then you wore the sweatshirt. Well, you said I'll let you borrow the sweater. And Which, then you kept this one. Three years later, still have it. Yeah, so anyways, I just remember like we were starting to become more friends. And like also my best friend from Moody was like, every time I'm with Johnny, he keeps saying, where's Ashley? It's not like we had no context after we started dating. We yeah, we knew each other. And I knew that he was like a really solid, godly guy. Anyway, so then the pandemic hit and... And I moved to Iowa. He moved because he graduated from college and meanwhile I still had like two years of college left and I was just kind of living my life and So did I kind of I remember I reached out to you once on Instagram But I was asking him to like I told him when there's an opening at my church Which pretty much meant hey I'm in love with you can we, you no, come and get, we can get married No and then I remember you were so cold You were just like How do yeah, you know I, I was just texting No just you face. were <laughs> you were cold. No. So I moved to Iowa um, and I pastor the young adult community there and and so you know I was uh, there enjoying ministry but um, one this day I don't know how I had this weird experience or moment where God just asked me this question not not um, you know, verbally, not like out loud, but it was so clear. And he's like, who is the godliest woman that you can think of? Um, and of course, I thought of this um, girl called Ashley, um, who I had met previously in my academic career in college. And, um, and so I, I thought of her and I instantly sent her a message and- You did instantly? I don't remember. <laughs> Maybe I did, and I think we. And I might have texted you, and um, you messaged me. On I messaged you, but after that, a friend of my Kim came to, uh, to visit me, and he was landing in in Chicago, and so I had to. And he asked me if I could pick him up and then drop him off. Um, we spent some time together, and so I was gonna go to Chicago. Um, so I texted Ashley and said, "Hey, I'm gonna be in town, and I was wondering if you'd be interested in." in grabbing coffee with me uh, and she turned me down in the spot and you said no and then and after that you know I I said you know I took I don't know if you read Matthew 7 7 he says you know if you uh, seek you will find if you knock it will be open so I'm like I'm gonna be persistent um, and so which there's a line between being persistent and creepy so I'm like I need to make sure which which one's the line mm -hmm. and so I text I sent her a letter so I was a little wait more, what you missed a few things what first of all you were DMing me no. You sent me a picture of the coffee and Bible time sweatshirt, you wearing it. Okay. And then we DM'd. Then you slid in my stage. DMs and you asked for my number. And then he's like, I'm going to be in the city. Do you want to come say hi? I said hi to him in our plaza for like five minutes. And the reason I told myself I'm going to go say hi to him was to get the sweatshirt back. And I never brought it. You never gave me the sweatshirt back. Mm -hmm. There was a few times that you reached out and you're like, hey, do you want to get coffee? It was a few times. A few times. No, that's not true. 
a few times. <laughs> no, it was just one. A few times. It was that just he one reached time. out. No, 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 no. no. Yes. First yes. time I was like, no. The second time I was like, no, I'm in Door County. And then the third time I was like, no, I can't because of my sister. And long story short, my sister had a crush on Johnny first. So I felt like I couldn't like go out with Johnny or like even like become closer friends with him because I didn't want to hurt her feelings because she liked him first. Well, I said, I'm gonna write her a letter. So pretty much in the letter I said, hey, you know, um, I know that we didn't get to know each other as much as I would have loved to or would have liked to. Uh, so um, I am reaching out to you to see if uh, we can, um, if you will be interested in getting to know each other deeper. Um, and then I didn't hear from you maybe in a week or two. And so I waited for a week and then I'm like, well, you know, I'm just, I, I give up kind of, and, and I didn't think that she was gonna respond. Then you text me out of the blue saying how you were like in love with me and you, no, she, she, you text me saying uh, if I have received your letter, which I haven't, um, and apparently you had sent it and it, it was never sent, or you had put it on the mailbox and it was never sent. Uh, sure enough, the letter never showed up. <laughs> um, and so I call her, you in Door County, because mm -hmm. your connection was horrible <laughs> and and so we were talking for a little bit and then we came to realize like hey I think that we we uh, are interested in getting to know each other a little bit better um, so um, that was November and or maybe early December and after that I said hey why don't we meet in the city and uh, go on our first date um, and so we I went to the city I went to Chicago also I have footage on this day because we were doing vlogmas so Taylor was recording me as I was getting ready for this date. Did you know no. that? And she was interviewing me. What do you say? How She's am I feeling? I'm feeling great. <laughs> really? <laughs> Where are you going? I'm going to the city. Okay. What are you going to do in Chicago? Vaguely. I don't know what I'm going to do today. We haven't planned much. We? Mm-hmm. Well, there you have it, folks. Comment down below what you possibly think she might be doing in the city. So, I told him in the letter and I told him on the phone, I was like, can we just be friends? I don't know if I have feelings for you. At, at this date, he said, <laughs> I'm a pastor in Iowa, just so you know. So like, if you don't see yourself, you didn't say being a pastor's wife, mm -hmm. but you're like, if you don't see yourself like in going in that direction, like with your life, then, like, I don't want to continue this. <laughs> but for my, in my defense, um, something that a lot of guys lack is uh, being clear. And so one of the things that I want to see, I'm like, hey, you know, I'm three hours away from you, so if we don't want to waste each other's time, so I, I know that it's important to build a friendship, and I, I'm always all about, hey, before that, build a friendship and make sure that you guys get to know each other. But but at the same time, I was kind of more, my heart was more like, hey, if you're not interested in, you don't see yourself marrying a pastor, then uh, I don't think. And which was for me really scary because I was should go, like, we can continue building a friendship, but we should go uh, different. No, no, continue building a friendship. You're like, this uh, is not. No. Okay, no. but here's. <laughs> <laughs> I was, that freaked me out because I had told you, like, I just want to be friends and it put immense amounts of pressure on me to be like, I need to know yeah. if I'm ready to go to Iowa with you and mm -hmm. that stressed me out when I even didn't know how I felt towards mm -hmm. you yet. I mm -hmm. was like, I don't know. It was yeah. just like, whoa. So that's something I probably regret a little bit, maybe being too intense in that. I'd rather be clear and sound a little bit intense rather than you be confused and then that person doesn't even like you and then you end up being hurt and disappointed. So I think yes, but there's a level of clarity. But yeah, don't 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 tell don't scare her away. Mm -hmm. uh, after the date, I was feeling like I enjoyed it, but I was also feeling like kind of pressure. Mm -hmm. I gave you a Christmas gift. That's that is the one thing. <laughs> that gift was what turned my heart back around. Really? Well, I wasn't like I just was like I don't know how I feel. It was a normal hey. Merry Christmas. And then he gave me a gift and I was like, 
It's coffee. That gift was intentional. Um, fast forward a little bit in December or in January. We were getting to know each yeah. other. I went to Iowa and visited you him. You came to Iowa. You invited yourself over to my house. No, you invited me over to say, hey, would you like to have dinner? And No. Yes, <laughs> you See, no, no. Now you see why I was friends you were. He invited himself no, over no. to meet the family. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And somehow no, no, I you said yes. Me. You invited me over for dinner. Somehow I said yes. So she invited me over for dinner. No. And, and then I came to Chicago and it was awesome. I went home and then a few, maybe after a few weeks or maybe after a few days, uh, you text me saying if we could talk. And then um, you said, hey, I'm not really interested in a relationship with you. And so that was about it. And that's what she calls a breakup, which for okay, me wasn't a breakup. Okay, this was a breakup. <laughs> this is a, this is, this creates a debate every time we talk about this. Yeah. Well, I like knew that I liked you, but I was also like really, really, really scared. Mm -hmm. And like, I was just like really, I was wrestling in my heart how I felt about you because I was like, I was like, do I see myself as just being your friend, like that type of like, or like more? Mm -hmm. And like, there were moments that I was like, oh, this could be more, but then I would get like, I would freak myself out. I was worried that you were just going far ahead in your heart and that like, I would really hurt you one day if like, I just kept like telling mm -hmm. you like, things are okay, things are okay. But I wasn't like really telling you like, mm -hmm. I'm actually really, like I don't know yet. And like, I know like I could have grown a lot in that and I made a lot of mistakes. Like I could have been more honest and like, I was really worried that I would hurt you. I, we both had a lot of areas that we could grow in. Maybe from my perspective, there was a lack of clarity again. I was yeah. I was not sure what, what yeah. where your heart was, yeah. even though you say, hey, I'm not ready for our relationship, but there was still this back and forth thing. We, we probably had like three calls that week, oh. figuring things out. Well, I, I call my mentor there, which is um, Dr. Sauer, which he was my Greek teacher in, at Moody. Hey, told him, hey, I, I I feel lonely I, and this is what happened and then you know he listened to me and at the end he told me something that I will never forget and he said hey God wants you to have Ashley he will make it happen but if he doesn't want you to have Ashley why do you want her to and so I remember kind of that giving me a lot of why peace do you want her? or why do you want her um, if, if God doesn't want this for you why do you want it and, and so I think that you can apply that for every area of life for every Sing, single thing in life mm. if there's something that you want and God doesn't want it for you then why do you want it right mm. and so I that kind of brought more peace it, di it didn't uh, mean that it, that, that didn't hurt but uh, and so during that time um, Ashley said hey maybe we should take uh, a break from communicating from each other uh, for maybe a month uh, which became like a month and a half or something like that when you told me we were calling and I was like breaking up with him he goes is there a chance that this could ever happen like, is there a chance at all? And I said, no. I was like, there's no chance that this could ever happen because I didn't know what it could be like, like in the future. <laughs> and so I told you that. And then during, so I remember I told you, okay, we're not gonna talk. And then a week later you were on campus and I knew you were gonna be there. And so I knew that whole day, I was like, Johnny's here. I was like, what if I run into him? And I kept thinking, I was like, I really want to see him. Like, I really, really wanted to see you. And then you texted me and was like, hey, I'm here. Like, if you want to see each other before I leave. And I was like, I literally was in Molly in my room. Like, Molly, what do I do? What do I do? What do I do? I was freaking out because like, I really wanted to. But I also was like, I don't want to go back on my word. After that, we took the break and we didn't actually talk to each other. We didn't text and we didn't call. Um, and kind of that that time, God was really working in my heart. But but if I'm honest with you guys, and I've told I've shared this with you, is that I was really battling with the Lord because like I was praying that I'm like Lord, I want to kind of uh, help me to forget her in a way, kind of. And there were times that I'm like, to, I was so frustrated where. I'm uh, like, man, I miss her so much and I, I, I would love to, um, I mean, I saw the godly um, characteristics that Ashley had that I, I had never seen in anybody before and I was already attaching myself emotionally, kind of, uh, and, and this is something that I had to work out with the Lord and, and if maybe some of you guys have dealt with it, you marry a person in your 
uh, mind and mm. you know and that's really dangerous and unhealthy because maybe they are not there either yet or they will never be there mm. uh, and so when that breakup happened you pretty much think that you go through a divorce even though you guys are not even in a relationship dang and, what preach <laughs> and so what <laughs> And so it was it was really hurtful and so I had to like really repent from like oh it was an idol in my life and, and I had to confess and talk to people and, and have have community in my life and what are really my priorities and I have to put have people uh, with me uh, to to do life with you know because sometimes you're like man I, I wish that I can just have a girlfriend or a boyfriend I'm gonna be happy I'm never gonna be lonely and then you have him and you are more lonely um, so I had to understand that man, man my worth is found in Christ alone, in not uh, in Ashley. So that process was good. It was hurt, uh, and it hurt because there was a lot of, um, you know, a lot of uh, chiseling, refining. refining, and chiseling that God had to Fire. do in my in my life. Well, let me tell them what happened to me during that. Time. Okay. So. <laughs> 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 oh, okay. So during that time, I was just trying to forget you, the best I could. Cause like I told you, I liked you, but I was like just trying to like shove it down. Mm -hmm. um, Denial. I was really confused, and so I was just trying to forget you, and then like I I would be really sad and and lonely, but like sad missing you as a friend. Cause we would talk on the phone a lot. I, there would be things that happened in my life that I was like I really want to tell him that this mm -hmm. happened or hear how he is and then like really like I just kept thinking about you like when I, when I knew you'd be at Moody I would like look in the parking lot for your car <laughs> <laughs> and so I was just like missing you but I was in denial about it I literally vividly remember the day that you were gonna do your sermon in the big church mm -hmm. because you had talked about it before and I was this close to texting you and being like I'm mm -hmm. praying for you today what happened up to that point was like I felt like I was really wrestling with God trying to figure out like where is my heart and I had to come to this point where I was like it's been like one and a half months and I still can't move on from you and we haven't talked, talked about. but I felt like God kept bringing you back and it's kind of the opposite of what Dr. Sauer for said to you if God does want this, then why would you not want it? I know. Making s'mores. So we were opposites. And so, um, that's what I was wrestling with. And then finally I was like, you know what? I'm going to open the door to be friends with him again. Cause I felt really at peace about that. That was in Des Moines with Dana and I get a text. Uh huh. You know we're so happy. <laughs> um, no, and then I said, oh, block. <laughs> <laughs> No, you sent like a nice little text. I said, "Hey, thank you for being so patient." Like as if I was waiting for you, but I was. Um, even before I met Ashley, have, uh, I started this practice, physical practice of like praying on my knees every time I go to bed. But like Ashley was on my prayers, even in that what feels like you know the Israelites had like the 400 years of silence. That's what it felt for me. But even in those uh, some months of. <laughs> Well, even in the series, I was in constant like communication with God about Ashley and I'm like praying for her and and asking that the Lord would do something in my heart and so I, I didn't know what was gonna happen I didn't know that uh, we were gonna end up together but there was still a little bit of hope a little bit of faith in like man what if we actually uh, end up together um, and, and so I, I kept praying, I kept praying, and then Ashley reached out to me and I see the text and I say, thank you for being patient. Uh, I'll still love to continue building a friendship with you. And so I, I stopped hanging out with Dane because I, I drove home and I had like a two hour and a half drive and we called each other. Uh, we were just chatting the entire we way. We talked for two hours. Yeah, two hours just about life. And we and were so happy. Like I just remember it was there's so no happy. Pressure. No there's pressure. no pressure. Um, no kind of like... There's no um, kind of pressure to to anything, and, and so we started building a friendship. And I came down to Chicago, and then we grabbed ice cream with Molly and you. So I was three. Remember how weird that was? That was really weird. Um, but you have to tell them what happened when I was about to leave because I was still in a hotel. I forgot about this. I go for a jog, like I'm running. And if you're in Chicago, you're on Lakeshore Drive's big. Leaving Lakeshore Drive into my hotel, I see you and Taylor walking. And so I wasn't wearing my glasses, so I wasn't sure. I see two girls walking, and then, like, I recognize you right here. I am blind. Don't judge me. And so I stop. I take my headphones, and what happened there? 
Baby, I saw you from a distance. I my jaw dropped to the ground. I was like, <laughs> and then I saw you. It was so awkward because I was like, what the heck do I say? And I already felt like when I saw you it was like stirring in my heart the night before, and I was like getting really nervous and shy. And then something in my heart. And then I literally five twenty minutes later, ten minutes later, I texted you and I was like, can we see each other? Before yeah, I was, I was in my hotel. I took a shower, come back, and, and I, I received a message from Ashley and I said, hey, can I see you before I leave? And if you are a guy, girls can be so confusing <laughs> sometimes. And so I sat down and it was this awkward silence. I was like, all right, what's up? It was awkward silence. I didn't know what to say. I didn't know how to tell you where I was at because like, I didn't know where I was at, but I knew that I was like starting to have feelings for you. And I was like, I just want to be friends, but... And like I couldn't say it and you're like, do you have feelings for me? And I was like, no. You said a little bit. And then I said, well, a little bit because I couldn't admit <laughs> it to myself. And then after that, it was so weird. We just had such a good time. We got smoothies. We were hanging we out for like out. three more hours <laughs> <laughs> in the city. When I felt horrible because I'm like, this dude's going to think I'm nuts. We were sitting out there for like an hour and I couldn't figure out what to tell you about my heart. Mm -hmm. How did you not like want to leave me in the dust? Hey. Grace upon grace. So what happened after that is that I had before the whole what you call a breakup, um, I had invited Ashley to come over to uh, the young adult ministry that I lead to speak. And one of the reasons I wanted to have Ashley over is because I really admire her ministry and her passion for for ha helping people fall in love with God's word and, and Jesus. And because I also like you, and so I wanted to see you. Kind of an excuse to see her. We did ministry that night together. After that night, and it felt so good. Me and Molly were driving back home to her house, and I we were both shocked. We're like, that went amazing. And doing ministry with you felt like really right. Mm -hmm. Like it just felt right. It started right there. I feel like God had been orchestrated okay. everything up until that point, but. Oh, yeah. That's when we vividly started seeing that there's no other explanation than God for what he has been doing and yes. how he has been displaying his sovereignty on this relationship. Oh yeah, that was a God moment because that night it was just like, I couldn't explain how like the Lord just brought us together to do ministry together. Mm -hmm. And then, um, we'll go to Pella. Pella. And then we're at this beautiful lake, the sun is setting and like at this point we're still friends. Bali left. Molly is like this amazing third wheel this whole time, which I feel horrible about, but she loved it. We get to this lake and she runs down this cliff. Mm -hmm. And you're like, oh, I'm not going down. She runs down this cliff to the beach, like just runs. And like, not intentionally, like for some reason she just wanted to go to this beach. We ended up sitting right there in the edge of the yeah, little grass area. Yeah, so then area. we were sitting on the edge with the sun setting. The sun was the lake. gorgeous. And it was silent for a while. Remember, mm -hmm. we were just like sitting there. I was like, well, we were grass. talking for a little bit, and then you, and then there was like this awkward silence for, for like 20 minutes. And then, and then goes, I go, so what is this? So what are we? So what are we? I said, I like you, but well, there are no buts. <laughs> and then I say, and then I wait a few seconds, and I say, I like you too. And then we, that that's, that was the start of our adventure, and. Um, and you know, that's that's what happened. <laughs> and that's yeah, it's amazing. Oh, and now we're here. And now we're engaged. Um, and and kind of to if you're wondering how um, throughout the whole process, we've been seeking people, we've seek advice, we've. Uh, read material together, so it's been a super intentional process. It has seeking to, the Lord. Seeking the Lord, most importantly, it hasn't been this process like, hey, I think I want to marry you, like Bruno Mars, but actually, no. like, hey, I want to spend the rest of my life with you and serve Jesus together. And, and the um, reality is, is that it's been extremely hard. Mm -hmm. Like, it hasn't been like what people think, like, oh, all well, rainbows and butterflies. Like, it has been beautiful and amazing. Mm -hmm. But like going through all that to where we are now hasn't been easy. Mm -hmm. Like going through all those emotions and like separating for some time and like mm -hmm. having to deal with the things in our heart yeah. was really hard. Mm -hmm. So I think that like that's another sign that God is in this because like even remember we were listening to that sermon yesterday and he's like sometimes God doesn't give you what you want but what you need. So like what we want is like mm -hmm. a super easy, like happy mm -hmm. story that's like super easy and you meet the man of your dreams and fall in love with him and all these mm -hmm. things of what like movies are like. 
But in reality, like God ends up giving you what you need, mm -hmm. and that's actually better because you you are refined through it. And I think that, that that break was so so much what we needed, and so much what I needed, and kind of what you said. You know, I can think of Matthew six thirty three when when Jesus is like, "Hey, seek first the kingdom of God," and and I love what one version says, and everything else will be uh, added, or or God will give you everything that you need, not that you want. And so mm -hmm. I really wanted Ashley, but but God is like, "Hey, bro, like I'm gonna give it to you later." I mean, I didn't know that in the moment. But right now I'm gonna refine your heart and I'm gonna make you understand what's really important for you, which is my communion or your communion with me. Mm -hmm. And so during, it was a really refining moment where I'm like, man, what am I seeking first? Am I seeking a relationship with a, a, a human fallen being, mm. beautiful being, uh, or am I actually seeking a relationship with a God who's never gonna disappoint me? Mm. Uh, you know, Romans says, those who trust in God will not be disappointed. So God was just refining my heart and then um, kind of think of what the psalmist says, delight yourself in the Lord, He will give you the desires of your heart. And you know, during that process, uh, God kind of uh, pushed me to start delighting more in Him and eventually He gave me um, the desires of my heart because I was, my kind of my desires were in tune with His desires. Mm. Um, and that's how it began. And then um, kind of God, I understood how faithful God was and how faithful God is. So. Mm -hmm. So I would encourage people to like don't settle and uh, the, the wait is worth worth it um, if you're uh, you know even you don't, don't think as in like I'm waiting for someone to come but more like even in that season just you know grow your relationship with Jesus like don't even think like oh I'm just waiting now because I'm looking forward for God God to bring me so much but rather man I'm just like growing in this season and I'm enjoying this season wherever I am, whether you are married, whether you're engaged, whether you're in a relationship or whether you're single, you are, f you're, you're, uh, you are f worth or your worth is found in the person of Christ. Whether you have a ring in your finger or whether you don't have a ring in your finger, your worth is found in Christ alone and that's what matters. So I mm. uh, want to encourage you with you with our story and that's, that's it. Yes. We love you guys. We want to thank you so much for watching this video and stay tuned for more. Bye guys. Love you. Bye.